Well, it's good to be with you all. I, um, it's, it, doesn't the church look beautiful? Uh, I want to say thank you to all of those who helped uh, decorate the church last week. And there's so many uh, wonderful, beautiful things about this season that we're entering into, including our time of worship that we just had t- together. I love this time of year. I love these songs that we get to sing together and to do so together. I've been asking my wife if we can decorate for Christmas since February, so this is just great. We finally listened to Amy Grant's Tennessee Christmas, you know, a couple days ago. It's like, oh, it is the season. So I don't know what that is for you, but that's what it is for our family. Well, uh, this morning, uh, it, it begins my favorite uh, season uh, of, uh, of the church year, the season of Advent. Now, many of you may know this, uh, because we typically do a reminder about what Advent is each year, uh, but for some of us this might be new. So here's a quick reminder about what we're, the season that we're entering into as a church. The season of Advent is the season in the church that actually begins the church calendar. So in terms of the church calendar, we're entering a new year starting today. Isn't that cool that in the church calendar, a new year starts with new life and a focus on the birth of Jesus, and a reminder of our ultimate hope. Advent usually starts the last week of November, but this year the season of Advent is encompassed entirely in the month of December. Uh, You heard uh, maybe in the reading that uh, Dave and Tracy did for us, but Advent includes, the, the season of Advent always includes the four Sundays before Christmas, and the season of Advent ends on Christmas Eve, which we celebrate together. And then the season of Christmas starts, it doesn't end on Christmas Day, it starts on Christmas Day and goes for 12 days. So that's the kind of rhythm of the calendar that we're entering into. The season of Advent, the four Sundays before uh, Christmas, ends on Christmas Eve, and then Christmas season starts on Christmas Day. Our family for the last several years, I know I've said this, has done what we've done our best to practice the Christmas season those 12 days following uh, Christmas Day, which is not typically what our culture does. It's Christmas Day, and then it's over. We're on to New Year, right? <laughs> but the season of Advent maybe can help us, teach us to wait and linger, not move too quickly to Christmas, uh, but to anticipate the coming of Jesus. That's what this season is all about for us. So the word Advent, it literally means the coming of or the arrival of something or someone. And in Scripture, uh, that is applied to the person of Jesus. So this season, we remember the coming of or the arrival of God in and through the person of Jesus. So I think if we understand that and enter into this season, with, let's, uh, just to slow ourselves down a little bit, to linger in the beauty of this season and in the hope of what it means that Jesus has come to be with us, but not move too quickly uh, to Christmas. And we celebrate the coming of Jesus because it means all kinds of things for us uh, and at the world uh, and a bit for the world at large. One of the most meaningful things that it means for us is that it brings us hope, which is typically the first theme, the first thing that we look at in the season of Advent. We have hope that we are not forgotten. God is with us. We have hope that we are not left up to our own solutions. Praise the Lord. God provides us with salvation. And we have hope that uh, we can make it through difficult and trying circumstances. God brings renewal and peace. Usually uh, in the first week of Advent, we almost always join the the Old Testament prophets as they long for help within their own story. That's where Advent typically begins for us. We're asked to connect with their hardship at a very deep level. For some of us, that can be easy to do during a holiday season. But it's in this first week of Advent that we're asked to feel the desperation of the prophets as we remember the ancient story of God's people. We know that God's people, they did not have an easy go of things, did they? (laughs) It seems, uh, this may seem like an odd way to begin what is typically a very joyful season for us, but that is what we're asked to do at the beginning of Advent. 
the people of God had a hard road all the way up to the time of Jesus and beyond. And we're asked to remember that reality and even to think about the, difficult, the difficulty and the hardship that we may face in our own life and certainly that exists in the world at large today. This is the context in which we're asked to think about and talk about the idea of hope. Author J.D. Walt writes this in an article on Seedbed. It says, In Advent, we sink down into the ancient story of God's people and remember what it means to hope. We walk with them in the despair of the desert road as they look to the heavens for help. We ache with the prophets. We sing along in desperation with the poets. And we recognize that the, uh, that the promise arrives at last in shocking glory. We rejoice at the grace we still can't get our minds and hearts around. It's in this first week of Advent that we're asked to recognize the hardship that we see in history and even, like I said, today. And then begin to experience that thrill of hope at what God has done. He has sent his son into the world. And that thrill of hope is made more significant when we recognize that the hope that Jesus brings comes to a world that is in desperate need of help. It was back then, and I would say it is now. Amen. (laughs) We're asked to connect our story with theirs. We need you too, Jesus. Author Sarah Wanick in her article, A Hopeful Invitation, writes this. The beginning of Advent doesn't begin uh, in the story of shepherds and angels or even in John's joyful introduction of the coming Messiah. Advent begins long before when the darkness was all-consuming and all hope seemed lost. Advent begins in the dark. Much like light broke forth in the pitch black of of unformed creation, Advent begins in the helpless and hopeless of the night. And we're invited to hear prophets like we heard earlier, uh, Tracy and and, uh, Dave read this, but prophets like Isaiah that cry out, oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains would tremble before you. Uh, As when fire sets twigs ablaze and causes water to boil, come down to make your name known to your enemies and cause the nations to quake before you. So hope you're getting it that Advent always kind of begins in this sense of tension. We're supposed to feel at first that something is wrong. Something is wrong with the world. Something is wrong with us. We're broken and only God can fix it. And on the other hand, we're supposed to begin to experience this hope-filled resolution That God sent his son and has begun the process of solving the problem. That's where we start in the season of Advent. This is where we begin to hear some of the scriptures that we know so well. And we love to read at this time of year. It's in this tension where we're asked to connect with the difficulty that the prophets experience and the people of God are coming through. And then we hear in the midst of all of that, these beautiful Scriptures that are like a balm to our soul every year, like light breaking through the darkness, we begin to recognize that God is actually keeping his promise. You'll know these. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. Doesn't that just feel like Christmas to you? (laughs) For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. You will enlarge the nation of Israel and its people will rejoice. They will rejoice before you as a people rejoice at the harvest, like warriors dividing the plunder. A few verses later. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. The government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. Isaiah 11, in verse 1, it says, Out of the stump of David's family will grow a shoot, yes, a new branch bearing fruit from the old root, and the spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding and the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and he will delight in obeying the Lord. And one more, Jeremiah 33. The day will come, says the Lord, when I will do for Israel and Judah all the good things that I have promised them. In those days and at that time, I will raise up a righteous descendant from King David's line, and he will do what is just and right throughout the land. And in that day, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. Incredible. I love these passages. I love these verses. 
These are all wonderful, hope-filled passages found in the Old Testament that begin to point forward to the person of Jesus. And it's at the beginning, uh, it's the, the beginning of hope in the midst of despair that the prophets are writing these things. And we can experience that too. That's some of the joy of this season, is that we can experience this too. At least we can be reminded of the truth of what Jesus has done. I just want to encourage you, don't lose your awe and wonder at what Jesus has done for us. Don't lose your awe and wonder about what we talk about here this week and in the weeks to come. We talk about it every year, but it is always a good reminder about what this season means and what Jesus has done for us. I pray that the Holy Spirit, as we hear these scriptures and talk about these things, ignites again an awe and wonder at what God has done for us. So I'd like to leave you with a metaphor that will help you hold on to the hope that we find in Jesus at Advent. Uh, In fact, this isn't my idea. It comes from the author of Hebrews. Uh, So what is hope in Jesus like? Well, he tells us in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 18 and 19, and he says this, Therefore, we who have fled to him, this is Jesus he's talking about for refuge, can have great confidence as we hold to the hope that lies before us. This hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. It leads us through the curtain into God's inner sanctuary. I love that word picture about what it's like to hope in Jesus. Biblical scholar David Sevilla writes this in his commentary on Hebrews. He says, Using the simile of an anchor to convey the significance of believers' hope invites the readers to regard hope in Christ as a fixed point in their lives as that which keeps them from drifting into danger, uh, their source of stability in a storm. For the wavering, those who are seeking to root their lives in some order again, the author says that that order is to be reestablished in and through Jesus. Isn't that a great way to think about Advent hope for this season? That it can be an anchor for you, a fixed point in your life. You see, the hope that we find uh, in Jesus in this first week of Advent isn't just any kind of hope. Hope in Jesus is not fleeting and it is not fragile. Instead, it's like a strong and firm anchor. Even when everything around us seems to to spin out of control, hope that Jesus provides us is steady. Again, uh, therefore, we who have fled to him... uh, can have great confidence as we hold to the hope that lies before us. This hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls, and it leads us through the curtain into God's inner inner sanctuary. I don't know about you. I know there's probably many of us who could stand up and, and talk about or testify to what hope in Jesus has been like in your life and stories about how hope in Jesus has been like an anchor point for your life. Pastor Holly and I talked about this briefly in our, in our weekly discussion podcast, which is back up after me being gone for like a month. So sorry for those of you who listened to that. Um, we talked about there's been moments in our life that have been extremely difficult, <coughs> and I, we couldn't have made it through, except for the hope that we found in Jesus, Jesus bringing us back and back and back when things felt desperate. and We didn't know what was going to happen, or we felt out of sorts, or like storms of life were overwhelming. It was Jesus that kept us anchored and kept us moving forward. <coughs> Excuse me. So we all know what an anchor is, right? It's that heavy object that you drop into the water and it keeps a boat or a ship in its place. It's the object that keeps the ship from being carried away by the wind or the waves. Without an anchor, a boat would be uh, adrift, tossed by the current or the, any storms that, that come along. We've all experienced difficulty in our lives, whether that's in our own circumstances or in the world around us. Life can feel, to continue the metaphor, like an unpredictable sea with waves of uncertainty or fear or hardship crashing against us, pushing us from here to there. Maybe you've experienced that in your life. Maybe you're experiencing that to some degree even right now. Well, Hebrews is telling us that hope in Jesus is like an anchor for a ship. Jesus is like that anchor for our souls. He grounds us. He holds us steady. And it is something that we need in the circumstances of our life and certainly in the circumstances of our world. While I was in Asia recently, I had an opportunity to be on two different boats. And the first boat 
that we had to take uh, was to travel from the northern coast of Thailand to the shore of our first creative access country. And uh, th that's how we got into the creative access country. I'm going to show you a couple of pictures about what this boat was like. Uh, it was long and slender, and at first, oh man, I was a little nervous. You could see, <laughs> this is where they kept the, they stored the boats. Uh, if you're online, you should be able to see these uh, as well this week. Uh, and so, <clears throat> this is where they stored the boats, and then you can see uh, what those boats looked like. They were long and slender, they had this roof on the top of them, and... Uh, yeah, I was a little nervous about this at first. Uh, the, when we got in the boat, we, we got not only ourselves, but we had some luggage with us, and that boat went like this because it was so slender. And uh, you can tell it was long and kind of slender, and so this is what it looked like while we were on the boat. And uh, I so wanted some more stability. <laughs> it was great. We ended up making it. Uh, uh, it was awesome. The second, oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, the second boat that we were on was a much bigger boat. It was a tourist boat for the, from the second creative access country that we went on. It was very stable, and we, we went around uh, this river kind of touring some of the city that we were in. Um, and uh, so it was a little bit um, um, easier to, uh, to feel safer on that. But as you can see, I, I put that little circle around there. I had this great feeling of relief once we got into the boat and they tossed the rope to the other guy and the other guy, you know, put that rope around the anchor there that we knew that the boat uh, was going to be stable. <laughs> so just a couple of fun examples of what that was like just recently for me in, the, <laughs> in these uh, countries that we were in. Um, it's hope in Jesus that is like the anchor which steadies us Whatever storm we face, it gives us something firm to hold on to, to trust in, and to rely on. Advent is about celebrating the arrival of Jesus, but it's also about remembering the, uh, the, this, uh, that this arrival brought with it ultimate hope. God is doing something that we can't do. And it's because of that hope that, it can be, that Jesus can be a fixed point in our lives that can steady us and anchor us. And it can be a fixed point in our lives because Jesus' arrival proves that we can trust God to come through because he keeps his promises. God promised to deliver, and he did. Ultimately, through Jesus' death and resurrection, our hope is anchored in God's completed work and proof that he will always come through. He did what he said he's going to do. He's still doing that, and he will continue to do that. <laughs> Something we can trust in. That's why this verse describes hope in Jesus as strong and trustworthy, or some translations say firm and secure. The hope that we have in Jesus, again, isn't fragile. It's grounded in the character of God and his proven track record of following through on his promises. God is faithful, he has been faithful, and he always will be faithful. Amen? He sent us his son. So the hope that we have is strong and trustworthy, firm and secure. And this is incredible because I think for most of us, uh, our experience, we experience a whole lot of uncertainty in, a lot, uh, in many areas of our life. Jobs or health or family or relationships and more. But Hebrews reminds us that the hope that we have in Christ is strong and trustworthy because of God's faithfulness. Look at what it says in Joshua chapter 21. It says, and the Lord gave them rest on every side just because, uh, just as he had sol solemnly promised their ancestors. None of their enemies could stand against them. For the Lord helped uh, them conquer all their enemies. Not a single one of the good promises the Lord had given to the family of Israel was left unfulfilled. Everything he had spoken came true. Incredible. So hope in Jesus uh, uh, is an anchor, as an anchor is powerful because it is not dependent on our own circumstances. Hope in Christ is not fleeting and it's not fragile, but firm and secure because it is completely and only dependent on the character, nature, and track record of God. So as we enter this Advent season, I want to invite us to pause and to reflect on this incredible hope that we have in Jesus. A hope that is strong, a hope that is trustworthy, deeply rooted in God's promises and his ability to deliver his people. 
to deliver us, to deliver you, to deliver this world, to see his kingdom grow and expand in Snohomish, in Washington, in the U.S., and around the world. It's a, this hope is a gift that anchors us when life feels overwhelming. It reminds us we're not alone, and it's a hope that meets us right where we are. As you sit here today, right where you are, in your fears, your struggles, your worries, or doubts. So as we light this first candle, we reflect on the hope of Christ, I want to encourage you to ask yourself, what is it that's anchoring me today? Are you holding fast to the hope that you have in Jesus? Or are you feeling adrift in areas of your life? Are you mindful about God's ability to be faithful and keep his promises? To this very day right here, do you think about that? If you, feel, if you feel unsteady, let Advent draw you back. Anchor that never fails. Jesus Christ himself. So I'm going to invite the worship team. But as we end, there are, are, I want to give you three. You can live out this hope in Jesus uh, as an anchor for this. Scripture and prayer. We just got done. Done with a whole, whole, whole practices of Christian anchor us of Jesus. So I want to make this a part part of your your life. Promises of God. 10, 15 minutes, maybe more. To read. Passage of hope. Number two. Choose one.